The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Beat Brain Cells and the host of Between Terramina's and OA Native Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and those watching OA Native Television. A lot to talk about this week. Of course, districts are now underway for, for boys basketball. Um, girls basketball, we're now at regionals. Of course, three teams are left there. We're going to recap the um, districts for um, girls basketball. Um, also, we're going to talk about the um, district semifinals coming up and what teams do have a very good chance to uh, make a serious run um, at this. Um, we're going to also talk some disappointments. I mean, like I was really, you know, disappointed with a couple teams um, in their postseason. I thought they would be, I thought they would be um, better than they did. I mean, really underperformed. Um, a couple teams we're going to talk about. Um, both Groves is girls and boys basketball teams, um, and also North Farmington, of course. North Farmington, we know the story about their girls basketball program there. Um, let's look at, of course, our main story. Of course, the um, obviously when you look at the districts, they're what they're underway. Of course, um, and girls basketball regionals are underway, are going to be underway pretty soon. Um, in girls basketball, obviously we're going to recap each each district, of course, um, who won their district, and of course who's moving on. Um, we're going to go with district number, um, you know, we're going to recap, obviously the, um, you know, we're going to go with division one first, of course, I mean, division two first, of course, that district was won by Warren Fitzgerald, um, knocking off Hazel Park. Um, you know, when you look at Ferndale, Ferndale University, of course, both those two teams, um, you know, you really look at what both of them, um, Ferndale, of course, was just absolutely throttled by, um, Warren Fitzgerald, um, 68, I think the 33 was the score there. Um, Ferndale University, of course, lost 58-17 to Ferndale um, in the pre-district. Um, when you look, and of course, f and when you look at that district, you kind of really didn't expect um, an Oakland County team would go to the next round, um, or an OA school to go to the next round. I mean, Hazel Park had a good chance, you know, against Warren Fitzgerald, but at the end of the day, of course, the Spartans, the way they're playing, um, they're right now on a mission right now, and, you know, the, the way that they did, I mean, like, bottom line was, I mean, you know, honestly, that's really what it was. I mean, Warren Fitzgerald, give credit to them, give credit to Spartans. I mean, they played really well. Um, And then, of course, we have district number um 30 courses where Harper Woods was at. Of course, Harper Woods um was in a district with Growth Point North. Um, Growth Point North ended up winning the district. Um. Pretty convincingly, but Hart over St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Um, Harper Woods, I was really surprised how they lost 50 to 41 in that one to the Huskies. Um, I just really didn't expect that score. I thought Harper Woods would be a little bit better in that game against um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview. I know, I know St. Clair Shores Lakeview lost a lot of talent last year, um, but. You know, I really didn't expect, um, I just didn't expect, um, the, um, you know, I, I just didn't expect that the Pioneers would just go in there and, and the way they played against, um, the way they played, I mean, like against St. Clair Shores Lakeview, they didn't play very well in that game. Um, <laughs> of course the Huskies really, you know, controlled things, you know, they ended up winning at one by nine, um. You know, it was an interesting year for Coach Anthony Brown and his team. Um, you know, and then on the other on the other district over at um Hazel Park for Ferno Ferno University, I think Ferno U's got a very good upside heading in the future next year. I really think Ferno does as well. Um back to Harper Woods. Um you know, I was just very disappointed with how Harper Woods um played in that game against St. Clair Shores Lake. We were just really disappointed. Um, usually it's a team that usually likes to average around like 50 over 50 a game. Um, but just couldn't do it against the Huskies. And when they play teams that are sound defensively, they just tend to struggle. And that's really what happened here. Um, bottom line was, you know, when you look at that game, when you look at that district with Harper Woods this season, obviously, um, as long as they defend, as long, I mean, as long as teams defend Harper Woods, you know, they're going to be Harper Woods. I mean, that's really what it is. 
So, and that's something that Coach Anthony um, Brown needs to fix next year. Um, if Harper Woods na- wants to make the next step. I mean, they got the players coming back. I mean, you got Cecilia Peterson coming back. It's a big deal there. Um, they've just got to build on program strength. That's really where it is with them. Um, if they do, I think they're going to be solid. I mean, we're going to see what happens to them next year. We're going to really do. Um, district 28, of course, this district was at, um, was at Utica, was at Avondale. Of course, this district was won by Utica Ford. Um, Troy Athens and Avondale were both in this district. Um, Avondale was just no match for, um, Utica, for, um, Utica Ford in the district semifinals. Um, of course, Utica Ford went and blew them out. Um, and then Troy Athens and, um, Utica played it went down the wire as 46 44 in favor of Utica over Troy Athens. Um, we're going Avondale first here. I think with Avondale, just it was a rough year for them. I mean, just a really, really rough year for them. I mean, just with you know, yes, they lost a lot of talent. Obviously, when you lose players like a Reagan Lawrence and um, you know, and a Savannah Schmidt, that's gonna be a big loss there for Coach Roy Christman. Madison Manyweathers, I thought, had a decent year. Um, they weren't as good defensively as I thought they would be. Um, they had some really bad losses early. Um, just, you know, it's, I was just really disappointed with Avenue this year, just being honest with you. I mean, I thought I, I thought they would be better, but I just didn't think that, you know, I thought they could have taken the next step. I mean, like, they did finish fourth, I think, in the blue behind Oak Park um, and, um, you know, Farmington, the Booby Hills, but, you know, just kind of really didn't expect. I thought Avondale had everything lined up. They had home court. They had, you know, a good chance, but they had to play that opening round game against Sterling Heights Stevenson where they ended up winning that game. I mean, but they ended up losing to Utica Ford. Of course, Utica Ford this year is a pretty good team. They're really good this year. I mean, and then, and then you look at Troy Athens, of course. When you look at the Red Hawks, injuries have really been the, their downfall this year. I mean, obviously, you look at, they had the players. I mean, you had Skylar Emerson. You had um, Emma, I mean, Ella Musco. Um, you have Abby Malone. You have, um, you know, Alex Link. Um, I just think injuries was the difference for Troy Athens this year. Just if they could have stayed healthy. You know, this might have been a different team. I mean, considering Utica was down this year, um, I didn't. Ex- I I was very surprised that that game was as close as it was. Um, I just didn't expect. Um, I really didn't expect that. Um, it would be a very. I I was surprised to be honest with you. I mean, I want to admit I was really surprised with how. You know, Athens played in that game against Utica Ford. I thought they had a good chance to win that game. I mean, they had a good chance, but they're just going to get done. Um, so it was a tough loss for Troy Athens. Really tough how that how that game went. Um, you know, when you look at it, Troy Athens next year, program strength is a big concern. Um, that's something to really watch for um, for them. So... When you look at the district as a whole, I mean, Utica Ford, of course, you knew there was was a favor in that district. Um, you knew that they were going to make some noise. You know what I mean? They could make some noise in their regional. Um, but you know, I think it kind of went expected. I thought I didn't. I thought Utica would have, you know, I thought Troy Athens would have knocked Utica off. You know, but and Troy Athens would have played Utica Ford in the district final would have been a, a more difficult matchup for the Falcons going against the um, Red Hawks instead of the Cheatons. So, you know, but it is what is. So, you know, that's what happened here. So we'll see. I mean, that we'll see. Um, District number 27, of course, this is the district over at Birmingham, Marion. Um, of course, this district had a lot of crazy things. Of course, they had a power outage over at, um, over at Birmingham, Marion. Um, you know, they had to move the district final to Seaholm. Um, Troy, of course, took on Seaholm in the um, district semifinals. Um, Groves, of course, the pre-district game I thought was a really good game between um, Bloopy Hills and Groves. Of course, that game went overtime. Um, 
Of course, um, Groves ended up surviving that 154-45. Um, Caitlin Sanders played really well in that game um, for Groves. Um, you know, and then, of course, um, and then, of course, um, Bloom Bay Hills, obviously, um, they got to make the next step. You know what I mean? That's the next goal for Coach Kristen Massey and her team. Um, you've won a division title. Now you got to make that next step. And that next step is, you know, going up a division into the white where you're going to have to deal with better competition, you know, but that's how programs grow is you got to play tough competition. You look at teams like Rochester. I mean, like Rochester, you know, a couple of years ago, they really struggled. Um, they took a lot of lumps. And then you look at, of course, um, what they did with their sub varsity teams. They played tough schedules and look what they got and look where that got them. I mean, right now you look at a team like, um, like a Lake Orion, of course, same boat. You know what I mean? They took a lot of lumps, you know what I mean, early on, and look where Lake Orion's at right now. I think Bloomby Hills can take that next step. I really do. I mean, they won the blue this year. Um, now I think I expect Coach Kristen Massey and her team, they got some players coming back, Ashley Fortner, Ruby Smith coming back. I mean, like, this team's built, you know, I think for the future, and they got a good program coming up. Um you know, so this is a good learning experience for Blue Bay Hills. I, I think they're going to be a very good team next year. Um, so I expect a lot with Blackhawks going forward there. Um, and then, of course, you look at the semifinals. We did talk about Groves and Birmingham, Marion. I'm going to talk that in a minute. Um, see home and Troy. I mean, this one, I kind of thought in my head, I thought Troy could have pulled this one off. But instead of being a route um, in favor of them, um, in favor of um, Seaholm over Troy. Um, really didn't expect. Um, I just really didn't expect that. Um, you know, it, it's mind boggling me that, you know, Troy's playing in the red. Tougher division. You got three teams that are still in that are in the red. Three of them are in the state. Are state ranked. Two honorable mentions. Um, you know, you, you've gotten just, you've virtually gotten crushed by almost everybody in the red this year. I mean, you've lost 18 straight games. And then you look at, of course, on the other side, Seaholm, not the greatest of seasons Seaholm's had, but, you know, they play in the white. I mean, you kind of think, okay, red's going to beat the white. You know, a red team's going to beat the white. That wasn't necessarily the case here. This was a blowout in favor of Seaholm. Eddie Flynn played well in this game. Shea Manchester played well in this game. I mean, it was mind-boggling to me how Troy lost this game. It really was. I mean, I've got some concerns with Troy next year. I mean, you know they're going to be in the white next year. If they're not, something's wrong. Um. So when you look at Troy next year, you got Diamond Prince. Um, you got um Reagan Zider. Um, there is a foundation core for them, and then you got Macy Zider, who's gonna be a eighth grader next year, gonna be coming up in two years. So when you look at Troy, yes, if everybody talks about the future of Troy basketball and say, okay, it's bright, you know, it's bright. But I've got some concerns. I I, I mean, this team's got me. I'm really worried about Coach Julius Porter's team. I'm really worried because, you know, they've got some figuring out to do this offseason. I mean, they, they got to do some soul searching a little bit. I think Troy does because, you know, maybe being in the red this year was a bit too much for this young team. Really was. Um, They do lose some key players. I mean, you lose a Charlotte Gillian. You lose an Avery Allen. You lose a, um. there's others they lose. But I'll tell you what, I've got some serious concerns with Troy. I really do. Um, and then of course there's and then see and then Seahome will talk to them in a minute. Um, you know, because Seahome, I I really thought Seahome what they did against Birmingham Marion. Um, I thought home court would have been a would have been like something to um, you know, it always helps when you have home court. It gives you like ten extra points, but. They just really had a terrible second quarter in that game against Birmingham Marion, and that not being the difference, um, you know, and that was a, um, you know, and 
I thought Mackenzie Swanson played well in that game. Um, but if there was one team I was really disappointed with, it was Groves. I mean, you look at this team. You look at this team. And you you have Caitlin Sanders. You have Sierra Rocco. You have um Cameron Little. You have Lily Gallagher. I mean, you have J.C. Roy. I mean, you, I mean, that is a, I mean, you play in one of the toughest divisions in the state in the red. You're taking on a Birmingham Marion team, not as good as they've been in years past. I mean, like, you had everything all there for you. You had everything there for you. You had a chance to win it. And you couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it done. I mean, it was 30-29 was the final score there. You dominated. You controlled the game. You controlled the tempo. You let Marion hang around, and that's what happens. You can't let teams hang around and expect to win. And I don't know how to explain it. That's really what happened. Groves let Marion hang around. And look where it got him. This was their best chance to get them. You have an experienced team. You have proven playmakers. You have a star in Caitlin Sanders. And you can't get it done against Birmingham Marion. And that team is not as good. They weren't that good. And yet you let them off the hook. I mean, how do you explain it? I know Groves has struggled this year, but they had a good chance. You could have won this district. You could have won the district. You could have been playing in the next round. I mean, how do you explain this? I mean, how do you explain it? You can't. When you look at Groves next year, you got, you do lose Caitlin Sanders. That's going to be a big loss. Um, but you do have Cameron Little, and you do have Sierra Rocco coming back. Um, that will help. You have J.C. Roy coming back. I thought she showed some bright, showed some brightness this year a little bit. I mean, like, um, I think Roy could be a really good guard next year for Coach Allison Heidi and her team. But just the opportunity was there for Groves, and you let it slip away. I mean, that's the one that. I'm going to remember this because this was a golden opportunity for you to win a district, let alone you have Birmingham Marion beat and you let them off the hook. I mean, they credit Marion. They kept it close and then they got it at the end. That's what good teams do. But my goodness for Groves, my goodness. I mean, my goodness. Um, and then, of course, we talked the district final. Seaholm, of course, lost to Birmingham Marion on their home floor. Um, Seaholm, you know, they had, a nice, they had an okay year. They had an okay year. I mean, don't get me wrong with Seaholm. I mean, like, um, you know, I thought them getting the two C was a big deal. Um, you know, it was a huge deal for them. Um, you know, not playing on that um on that Monday, that was a big deal. Um, just basically, um, you know, that gave them an extra day to prepare. They went and beat a beat beat Troy and then of course lost to Birmingham Marion. Um, just one bad quarter really did them in that game. They just fought back, they tried to fight back, they just couldn't get it done. So Birmingham Marion's moving on the next round of the regional. Um so you know, with that district, I kind of, you know, yeah, Birmingham Marion was a favorite, but I thought Groves, Groves had him. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. Groves had him, and they let him off the hook there. Really did. Um, And it's very unfortunate for Groves. I mean, really unfortunate. But, you know, Groves has got no one to blame but themselves for that game. They don't. Um, Let's go to district number 26. Of course, this was at... um. North Farmington, of course, um, this game also was, this district also affected by the power outages um, from Friday snowstorm. 
Um, of course, they had no power at North Farmington for um, during the ice storm, and then they had no power during the um, during the um, snowstorm. Of course, um, they end up getting the power back. Um, I think you know on um, I think either Sunday night or Monday. Um, but this district here um, was another what if district. You know, it was another what if. You know, I asked myself this question here. I mean, like, yeah, Far Farmington took on Farmington's mercy was. Farmington looked good against Troy Henry Ford. Um, won that one ninety to seven, um, and then they ran into Farm Hills Mercy. Um, that was a 68-33 um, blowout for Farm Hills Mercy. Um, really surprised with how um, just really surprised that um, you know didn't ex you know I kind of expected that would be the score, but. You know, but the the game, I really... Well, Farmington, of course, they do lose a lot. I mean, they do lose a lot of proven talent. Um, Yasmin Dorp, Clarissa Hankins, they lose two of those. Um, two of those players, and of course, Laura Guzman. Um, but for me, the bottom line with Farmington is, and I'm not, I'm not really honest with you, with them is, you know, you do well in the division. You do really well in the blue. You play really... You do very well in there. The problem is, for Farmington, is... When you go out of league, this is where they tend to have the most problems is when they go out of league. And, you know, it showed up here against a very good Farm Tales Mercy team. I mean, they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team. But but I just think that the difference there in that game was was that um, Farmington Hills Mercy really showed that they were the, um, you know, they were the better team. I mean, really was. And then the other district semifinal game was South at Arson Tech against North Farmington. Now, I kind of said this last week was North Farmington better beware of a and And boy, was I right. Um, North had, I mean, like, that game was really tight until the fourth quarter where North Farmington ended up pulling away 66 to 56. Um... But you could tell from that game that, you know, North Farmington's famous 2 2 1 trap didn't really phase AT. I mean, they put 56 on. I mean, you look at the Warriors, you know, obviously with their future ahead of them, with Kamari Page, Christian Banks, um, you know, yes, they lose, they lose Jalen Austin, um, but a backcourt of Page and Banks, you know what I mean? That's going to work wonders. In the future of your A and T, um, bottom line is, um, you know, you know, you kind of with A and T this year, their defense was absolutely atrocious this year, just atrocious. Their offense, they had at moments they looked really good, but defensively, it's going to be where Coach Akia Coach Train is going to have to address next year. Program strength is also another concern for A and T. I mean, those are two areas where Coach Train's got to address because. Those are going to be the two areas where I think a and is going to have going to have to deal with whether what division they're in, whether they're back in the red next year or they're in the white. I mean, program strength is a big concern for A&T going forward there. It really is. Um, and then there's North Farmington. Um, another team I talked about that I was surprised with. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at, of course, a team that's coming in undefeated, um, you know, you're going to have a target on your back. And North Farmington's had that target on their back all year long. I mean, and then, you know, with them having to survive A&T, I mean, they didn't look very good in that game. I mean, you know, offensively, you know, obviously relying on Leffler and Query, you know, that's, you know, that's going to be, you know, those are your two main pieces. Those are your two main off offensive options. Um... And then they run the Farm Sales Mercy course rank number six in Division One. Um, this one I kind of was shocked, to be honest with you. Well, of course they moved the game to Farmington because of a power outage, but I was really shocked how this game went because I thought this would be a lot closer instead of like it was fifty nine twenty three, and this was shocking to me because the first quarter it was nine nine, and then. Farm Tales Mercy's lengths took over and they virtually beat North Farmington at their own game. 
I mean, they talked about the two two one trap. Um, they, you know, quickened the pace up, um, sped them up, and that's what happened. I mean, that, bottom line, that's what happened. Because when you look at North Farmington, you know, they rely a lot on Leffler and Curry to carry them. I mean, like, that's how the game was. And they shut everybody else down. You know, they um they limited Leffler, limited Curry, and they, they shut everybody else down. Bottom line is, you know, you look at um bottom line is, you know, Farmington's Mercy's length really bothered North Farmington. And I was surprised, you know what I mean, like, you know, how their length was the difference in that game. Really was. So when you look at North Farmington next year, they lose, you, you lose Leffer, you lose Crary, um, you lose Hannah Hart. You got two players coming back, and you lose Elijah Muller coming back. You do have a Steve Jihad coming back. But if you're Coach Jeff Simpson, next year, you're looking at possibly, you know, it could be a struggle for you next year. It really could be. I mean, this group had an incredible year, 23-1. That's it. That's a lot to hold your head high for. You know what I mean? But credit them. They had a great year. Just really surprised how it ended. I thought North Farm could, could keep that momentum going. I mean, they had a great chance. They had a great chance. And then reality stepped in. That's what happened. That's really what happened. Was reality stepped in. The difference in that game in the district final was North Farmington only scored six points combined in the second and third quarters. That's not that can't happen if you expect to win. That can't happen. If you're gonna be a championship team, you know what I mean, you're gonna have to be consistent at all times. You know, so North Farmington, a lot of success this year, won the white this year. Um, you know, just couldn't get it through in the district final. You know, against a really good opponent, Farmington's Mercy. Really couldn't. Um, let's go to District 25. This was at Berkeley. Um, Detroit Renaissance winning this district. Um, pretty convincing over Detroit Mumford. But there were some really tight games in this in this district. Um, Berkeley, of course, knocked off Oak Park. Um, Berk, I mean, like, um, I think it was 47-19 was that score. Um, Berkeley looked really good in that game. Oak Park, you know, kind of really resorted back to a little bit of their struggles early on. I mean, like, they they struggled to score, um, giving up a lot of points. Um, but they got better during the middle and the end of the year where they were scoring above 50 points, which is always a good sign. So it's a good foundation piece for Coach Chantel Corson next year is to build on that, um, on that momentum. And then it'll carry into the postseason. Um, you know, playing a team like Berkeley, of course, the defense first team. Um, you know, I mean, like um, what Berkeley's had to go through this year um, with the um, with their inconsistencies. It says a lot there. Um, and then Berkeley, of course, ran into Detroit Renaissance. Um, rematch of a game from last year. We all remember that game. I remember that the podcast from March second of last year, talking about the upset of the year. I thought that was the upset of the, probably one of the, my top five biggest upsets in state history was Berkeley going into Detroit Renaissance and beating them. Um, you know, of course, Detroit Renaissance made some changes, of course, um, with Deshaun Wood taking over there um, for Coach Cheney Lawal. Of course, Cheney Wall's in the NBA with the Sacramento Kings. Um, but what they did to Berkeley they it was that was fifty seven twenty nine. I mean, you know, Detroit Renaissance, we know what they have. I mean, we know they got, you know, Christian Sanders, they got Nevaeh Otis, they got, you know, Amari Hardy. Um, you know, they're they're a heck of a team. Just a heck of a team. I mean, they played Lake Orion earlier in the year. Um But when you look at Detroit Renaissance, what they did to Berkeley was they basically wasn't going to have it. I mean, and I remember what they did after the game. I remember, I remember the Michigan Storm um, AU basketball 
Twitter page what they said at the game. You know what I mean? It was a good way to get some revenge after last year. You know? But I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to take away last year's upset win. You know, you're going to remember it. But, you know, I mean, like, but um, bottom line is, you know, Detroit Renaissance, they won that game against Berkeley. Bottom line. You know what I mean? So when you look at the Bears next year, there is some foundation pieces next year for the Bears. I mean, yes, you do lose Jillian Gomes. You do lose um, Maya Jones next year. You do lose Ava, Ava Beard. I really like their um, their foundation core next year. Malvin Nolan, you got every Winter Garden. You got um, Haley Kirkwood. I'm really high on her. I mean, Coach Cody Felder's got some talent coming back. I mean, like, don't be surprised they're back next year. Really wouldn't be. I think a team to really watch for next year is Royal Oak. I think what they, I mean, they had a tough three-point loss to Detroit Mumford, 45-42. Um, just really, you know, when you look at that matchup, I mean, like, um, you know, when you look at the, um, with Detroit Mumford, I mean, like, um, I thought, you know, Royal kind of had a good chance to knock out the Mustangs. They had a good chance. I mean, couldn't do it. But they had a chance to do it. And they got almost everybody coming back next year. That's going to be interesting to see next year for Coach Brian Zapata. A lot of proven experience next year. Could they be a player? We'll see. That we will see. Um, and then let's go to district number seven. Of course, this was at um, Lakeland. Um, when you look at um, this district, obviously this is one of the um, one of the teams that are still in the regional of course is West Bloomfield. Um, really wasn't really tested too much in this district with, um, you know, knocking off on um, Wall Lake Western pretty convincingly and then knocked off on um, Wall Lake um, Northern pretty convincingly. So, you know, when you look at the Lakers, obviously you look at both Davis sisters, you look at both Hendrick sisters, um, Destiny Washington, you got, um, you know, really, really the same crew just taking over, you know, playing really well. I mean, get blowout games, obviously, when you look at that district. Um, there's a reason why West Bloom Boots move on the regional. Um, and that was why. Um, and then let's go to um, district number six. Um, actually, district four. Um, let's look at that one first. Um, Oxford, of course, they got the district final. Um, ran in the grand blank. Of course, everybody expected this would be the matchup. Of course, Oxford knocked off Lapeer. Um, to get to this matchup, um, I was surprised at the score though, 66, 30, I thought it'd be much closer than, than that. I think a lot of that, you know, was the injury to Nevaeh Wood. I think that was a big reason why, um, you know, obviously when you look at Oxford, um, you know, losing her was a big deal. Um, you know, and then, um, because, you know, you look at in the game, I mean, one of their bigs. Um, went off in that game for Grand Blank. I just can't remember the name right now in my head right now. But, you know, of course, you knew they were going to have to deal with Chelsea Bishop and Jada McCray. Um, I mean, like, you knew that Bolton played really well in that game against um against Oxford. Um, Miranda Winemco had 17 in that game. Um, you know, they did a really good job shutting up Peyton Richter, Sophia Robb. Allison Hofstetter, they shut, I mean, like, Grand Blank shut all those girls down. I mean, I mean, like, bottom line was, you know, you know, when you look at Oxford, you know, this is the third straight year they've lost to Grand Blank. I mean, you know, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with them next year. Oxford's going to be very good next year. I mean, they got four of the five starters coming back. Um, I expect Allison Hofstetter to take on a much bigger role. Um, Sophia Rob take on a bigger role. Peyton Richter, of course, obviously in the interior. Um, the depth can be very interesting to watch for Oxford next year. Um, their JV team was solid. Freshman had a nice year. Program strength there for Oxford. I mean, bottom line is, you know, we look at the Wildcats, it's just building up the program, building up the depth. I think even playing a tougher schedule might help Oxford next year. I think going to the red might help Oxford next year. Um, because I know there's been talk about it. If Oxford were to go to the red next year, I think it would help them. Because the bottom line is, you know, going the red, playing in the red, playing in the white, 
much different animals. I think that's where I see Oxford, Nick. I see Oxford in the red. It would only help their program if they were in the red. Um, I think that's where they need to be. That's just my take on it. The Grand Lake moves on to the um, regional over at um, Flushing, of course. They're going to take on Flint, Cumberland, Ainsworth. That'll be a really interesting matchup there. Um, Cumberland, Ainsworth knocked off Grand Lake. So it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um, let's go to District 6. This is at Clarkston. Um, you know, of course, um, Pontiac, of course, took on Waterford Kettering. Um, Pontiac was in it with Waterford Kettering. It was 27-9 to 9 at the half. And then, and then of course, um, it wasn't pretty in the second half um, where um, Waterford Kettering just pulled away and um, beat um, Pontiac. It was 64-22. Um, just really, you know, just really like, um, you know, like kind of what you expected. I mean, Pontiac had a really rough year this year um, for Coach um, Cornell Early. I mean, like... Um, it's going to be really interesting what Pontiac does this off season. I mean, they've got to build program strength. They got to get the players. You know what I mean? Everybody on the same page. I mean, that's really what the bottom line is with Pontiac. Um, it's a tough sell there, but it'll be very inter interesting to see what happens there with Pontiac. Um, and then, of course, Waterford Kettering. They ran into Lake Orion, and Lake Orion just absolutely just throttled them seventy to nineteen. Yikes. Yikes. That's all you got to say. Yikes. Um, Clarkson had no issue with Waterford Mott um, in that one. Of course, balanced scoring, of course, in that game. Um, and then Lake Orion played Clarkson in the district final on Friday in a snowstorm. Um, Lake Orion ended up winning that one 54-52. Um, Lake Orion hit 13 threes, um, only two twos in that game which is mind-boggling. Clarkston had a nice game for three as well. I mean, first quarter was 18-18. That pretty much tells the story right there. I mean, Eliana Roback had a nice game. I mean, she had a nice game for Clarkston. Um, 17 points. Um, Kira told me at 13. And um, and um, Ella Monger had 11. Um, Clarkston's got a... They lose four seniors. They lose some key players. I mean, they lose Ava Hernandez. Mia Zorski is going to be a big loss for them. Um, Anna Thomas, they lose. It's another big loss for them. But when you look at Clarkson next year, you got Emily Valencia coming back at Claire Walker. You have, um, you know, they also lose Kira Tomey. That's another big loss for them as well. But when you look at next year, as I mentioned, Emily Valencia, Claire Walker. Um, you look at Kira Zorski. Um, and then of course, everything starts, of course, with Eliana Roback and we know how good Roback is. Um, Roback, you know what I mean? This year, you know, I know she caught a lot of people by surprise this year with her play as a freshman, of course. Um, you know, a lot of people have high expectations for Roback and I think clearly, you know, she has lived up to the expectations, um. And you look at what she's done for Clarkson this year for Coach Aaron Goodnow, you know, I I think she's still got a lot to learn. You know, I think, you know, when you look at Clarkson next year, program strength looks very good for them. Um, their JV team was very good this year. Um, so a lot to look at in the future with Clarkston. Um, they're gonna be scary next year. I think they're gonna be very good next year. Um, Lake Orion moves on um to the next round to the regional, of course, on their home floor. Um, we're going to talk that regional in, in a couple minutes here. Um, and then we look at the, um, and then let's look at district number five. Um, when you look at district five, of course, it's that Rochester, of course, um, Rochester ended up winning this district. Um, but some games were really tight. I mean, Stony Creek versus Adams. I mean, it was tight for a half and then Stony Creek pulled away late. Adams, they got a young nucleus. I mean, players to watch next year, Faith Zolvis is one of them. Morgan McPherson's another one. Um, Samantha Blaine's another one for Coach Joe Malberg. I mean, Adams will be fine. Program strength looks to be getting back a little bit for them. Um, and then Adams took on, you know, and then Rochester took on Stony Creek, of course. Third time these two teams met. 
And, you know, it was a tight game. 43-39 was the final score there. Um, heck of a game. I mean, you know, kind of could have went either way. Um, of course, you know, Mia Carson, Sarah LaPrairie. Um, you know, but I'm really impressed with them. With um, freshman Stony Creek's got up. I've answered their last name. Um, I don't have the... I don't have my notes with me here. I mean, but I'll tell you what. Stony Creek's going to be very good next I think they're going to be very good next year. Yes, you do lose Mia Carson. You do lose um, Lily Solek. Um, those are going to be two losses. But Merrick Schlaubach, um, you got a, you got Sarah LaPrairie. You got Eva, yeah, Eva Netsch next year for Coach Kellen James. I mean, Stony Creek's got some pieces. They're going to be solid. I mean, program strength looks to be okay for Kellen, for Coach Kellen James. I mean, like, so that's something to really look at heading into next year for them. Um, and then, of course, um, Rochester, speaking of them, they moved on to the um, fi- the district final against Utica Eisenhower, where they end up winning that one on Saturday afternoon, 40, 44-33. Um, it was their first district title since 2006. Um, and it tells you the turnaround that Coach Bill Thurston's done. I mean, like, when you look at what um Rochester, four straight losses in district final, they overcame that monkey in their back. Now they move on the regional first time. I mean, like, first time since 06. I mean, like, it kind of tells you where that program's been. Um, credit to Coach Bill Thurston and his players for what they've done. Of course, obviously, we have players like Alice Mack, Kylie Robinson, um, Ava Williams, Stevie Norgrove, um, you know, and then Abby Pleasant, um, Natalie Race, um, and their future is bright too. I mean, Lucy Cook's a name to watch for next year for Rochester. I mean, when you look at it, so Rochester moves on to the regional. Of course, all three OA teams that are remaining in girls basketball right now are in the Lake Orion Regional. Um, we're going to talk that regional shortly here. Of course, when you look at the matchups, um, Rochester taking on West Bluefield. And then you have Lake Orion taking on Howell. Of course, Howell knocked off Heartland um, to get to this matchup. Um, and Heartland, of course, winning their first district title, I think, since 1996. Um, it's been a long while for Howell fans, of course, getting to the um, to this round here into the regional. Obviously, having to deal with Heartland the last few years um, when they've had some really good teams. Howell's had some good teams as well. But those two teams always have matched up in the district. But... You know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that matchup. Um, when you look at Rochester West Bloomfield first game, um, West Bloomfield, we know how good they are with both Davis sisters and um both Hendrick sisters and of course Destiny Washington. I think the bench is really developed for Coach Daryl McAllister. Um obviously Ava Lords had a nice year. Um but when you look at West Bloomfield, they do have one fatal flaw on their team, and that is their ability to defend the three. I mean, it is clear where I think bottom line is, you know, they haven't looked great defending the three ball at all, Um, and I think that is going to be, I think that could be their biggest weakness in the postseason is the ability to defend the three. I mean, I mean, like, they're very good offensively. Yes, they have, they run a three-two trap zone. That is one of the best in the state, but you know, when you when you def- won't defend the three very well, that could be a problem. That could be a serious, serious problem. Um, Rochester's case, obviously, you have both. You have the Twin Towers down low with both Mack and Robinson. Um, if they can get some offense from the guards, um, who knows? But it's a very difficult matchup to say the least here for Rochester going against West Bloomfield. Um, so I'm curious to see what Coach Bill Durson going to do in this game. Really curious to see how he's going to do this in this game. So that's my take on the matchup between West Bloomfield and uh, and Rochester. Um, and then you have Lake Orion and Howell. Um, these two teams are, I think, evenly matched teams. I mean, when you really look at <coughs> the path that these teams have been on, Lake Orion, we know about the depth they have, obviously. And then, of course, getting Manny Eber back is a big deal. I think for Lake Orion, getting also was a big deal for them in the district, getting Jody McCaffrey and Grace Sullivan back. That's a big deal for Coach Bob Bridges because, one, it gives them depth. It gives them that depth back. You know, yes, they did lose Charlotte Proboski to an injury, to an ankle injury. Um, but when you get players like Jody McCaffrey and Grace Sullivan back, that's a big deal 
especially when it comes to the depth that this team's had. Of course, you know, you look in the in their losses, you know, Lake Orion wasn't really at full strength. They have been at full strength all year long. Obviously, with the injury of Izzy Walensky, um, you know, with that ACL injury, I mean, but this team really hasn't been healthy all year long or has been whole, but they've found ways to win. You know, bottom line, this is a 19-win team. I mean, you look at, of course, a player like Audrey Wishmeyer who's had a really nice year. Um, Maddie Everett, we talk about her. Chloe Wiegers, we talk about her. Taylor Dinda, Dinda's had a nice year. Um, you know, Ryan Palachek, you know what I mean? Like, he's, but when she's on, she's a dangerous player. I mean, you look at Lake Orion, you know, and, and let's not mention Kylie Heck either. I mean, like, Lake Orion, this is a scary team. I mean, they're, I mean, they're a really scary team when everybody's on the same page. Um, how, of course, we know they're very good. I mean, they got a three-point shooter and a freshman who's very good. You got, of course, Molly DeLuia is a very good player. Um, how runs that one three one zone defense. I think that's a very interesting, um, you know, very curious. I mean, not a lot of girls basketball teams run the one three one zone defense um, in girls basketball. So it's a really... And Howell's had some good wins. They knocked off Belleville. They knocked off um, Canton. They've knocked off some. They knocked off some good teams. I mean, they beat Heartland twice. Um, so it's going to be an interesting matchup over at Lake Orion. Of course, that Lake Orion regional is going to be really interesting. Um, the other regional that has OA teams that doesn't have OA teams than OA schools host is at Royal Oak. Of course, you know you look at Detroit Renaissance there, Farm Hills Mercy. Birmingham Marion and um, Utica Ford are in that regional there. Um, but um, like I said, the main focus will be at the Lake Orion Regional. Of course, um, all three OA teams, red teams are in that regional. Um, so that's going to be something to really, really talk about um, as we talk in the next week's podcast. Obviously, we're going to recap that regional over there at, um, over at, um, at um, Lake Orion. So that's something to really watch for there. Um, and then, um, let's go, what's going on from girls? That's my take on the girls districts. Of course, the, um, other upsets, of course, are on there and the girls basketball. Um, of course, Belleville falling to Celine. That was a head scratch. That was a shocker for me. Um, didn't expect that to happen. Of course, Belleville's had a really nice year this year. I know Celine's a good team, but, you know, I just didn't expect that to happen to them on their home court. Um, I wrote a column on this, of course, on my blog at second by 4650 at blogspot.com explaining the um, regional. I mean, like, how important is the host regional? Very critical at this time of year. So, you know, so a, couple a lot of teams around the state still have teams in there but are playing in the regional. So that'll be really interesting to see. Of course, you can take a look at, at that column on my blog at second of May 4650 at blogspot.com. I'll also have a post on the ONTV blog as well. So that's my take on that. Okay, now let's go to some girl boys basketball. Obviously, obviously people are going to talk about you know, we've started the first round. We're filming today on Tuesday here this week. Um, I think a lot of people are going to talk about the upset of the year, one of the upsets. Um, obviously, Seaholm and Groves, a lot of people are going to talk about that. And, and a lot of people are going to be head scratch at that. Um, Seaholm beat Groves 55-48 um, over at Bloomfield Hills. That was a mind-boggling upset there. Um, people are going to say it's an upset. I don't necessarily know if it was an upset because I know a lot of people around the state have called it one. I mean, like, I know, I, I'll, I'll personally admit myself, I didn't expect Seaholm to win that game against Groves. Um, I thought that Groves would be, you know, I thought Groves, you know, obviously with the sophomores, the, at the, I mean, like with Josh Simpson, Josh Gibson, um, I mean, I didn't expect Seaholm to just go all out Bo Ryan that's what Seaholm did. They just went all out Bo Ryan and just played solid defense, played good D. De I mean, like just and limited growth and only I think twenty five percent shooting. Um, that's a credit to Coach um Mike DeGear and Seaholm staff. I mean, they're they're getting healthy. I mean, they've been healthy ever since the suspensions when they've got those guys coming back back in January. Of course, Seaholm and this team. See, I mean, this team won the blue title this year. I mean, they. Had a dramatic win against Troy Athens on the road to him close out the year. Um, and then they to send that statement, knocking off a team like that, um, the Cole White champions. I mean, like that says something right there. I mean, I mean, for for Groves, this is a wasted opportunity. And the reason why I say this is because 
you know, we I've heard the talk. I mean, I've heard the talk. You beat Bloomby Hills twice. Um, you came off a big win against um, you know, you, I mean, you knocked them out twice. You, you, I mean, like you're coming off, you know, you're sharing the white title. I mean, and then you and then you let you go out there and just have one of your worst games of the year, um, against um against Seaholm. And I credit Seaholm for scouting in that game. I really do. Um, bottom line is, you know, you know, they just Seaholm just wanted it more. And that's why CM's moving on. I think they overlooked. I think Groves overlooked him. That's what I think. You know, and I think that's that's the case. So if you coach Mark West next year, you got three proven guys coming back. And um Elijah Elder, you got both you got Simpson and Gibson. Then you have a strong JV team coming in. I mean, they've got they gotta make sure mentally they're there. And that's what happened that game. Seaholm just out meddled them. That's really what happened. Bottom line. It wasn't talent. It was just mental mindset. That's really what it was. Um, and then on the other side of that district, you had West Boomby, Boomby Hills. This could have went either way. Um, 62-56 in favor of West Boomby over Bloomby Hills. Um, Noah Adams had 26 points in his final game um, as a Blackhawk. Curious to see where he goes next year for college basketball. They do lose Amon Taylor. Do CJ, they do lose CJ Jackson. Um, you know, that's going to be some big losses there for Bloomfield Hills. Um, and then, um, and he lose Brandon Wellen too. That's a, um, another loss for them. So, you know, so, um, <coughs> curious to see where coach um, Brian Canfield goes with next year with the Blackhawks. Um, and then of course, other district games, of course, um, Southfield winning 6-6-6-3 over um, Livonia Stevenson. They're moving on to take on North Farmington. High scoring game there. Um, of course, um, Stony Creek losing a tough one. The Romeo 66-63. Um, that was a heck of a game there. Um, Lake Orion moving on past um, Rochester 64-54. It was an ugly game between those two teams. Um, Rochester had a really... Good year. I mean, obviously, you lose a player like Grant Calgano. That's going to be a big loss. You know, that was a big loss for them. I mean, they did they did lose Max Mel, who fouled out in that game, and a lot of, and Eli Collage, who um injured his knee in that game. Um, Lake Orion, of course, having DJ Morrow, um, having sixteen points. Kawhi Fly had sixteen points. Um, and Blake and uh, Kawhi Fly had fourteen points, and Blake Liddell had um sixteen points. Of course, for Lake Orion. They get to take on Rochester Adams in the next round. That'll be a really interesting matchup between the Dragons and the Highlanders um, over at Utica Eisenhower. Over at Grand Blank, Oxford winning that one against um, against Lapeer. Um, Jake Champagne at 26 points. Tough matchup for Oxford looming with Grand Blank on that Wednesday. It's going to be really difficult there um, for them. Um, Farmington taking on Detroit Henry Ford. Um, Pontiac, of course, losing the water for Kettering, 60 Sixty-five, forty-eight. Um, just a rough year for Coach Damon O'Neill in the Phoenix. Um, I'm not sure what direction they go next year. I mean, like, you know, I don't know what to say about Pontiac. I mean, like, you know, with the with the numbers there, program strength a concern there. Um, so Pontiac, you know, eliminated from the postseason. Waterford Kettering gets to take on Clarkston. Um, Avondale takes on Waterford Mott. That's gonna be an interesting game. I said that game could be a trap game there, over at Clarkston. Um, Harper Woods takes on Gross Point North. That's going to be an interesting game right there. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Um, and then you have, um, and then, of course, we talked the um, Bloopy Hills District already. The Troy District gets underway um, between, um, you have Troy taking on Utica. That's going to be a very difficult game for Troy. Um, that's a trap game waiting to happen there. Um, Troy Athens takes on Sterling Heights Stevenson. That'll be really interesting over at Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um, and then District 25 at Royal Oak. Of course, um, we have um, actually District 26 at North Farmington. We got um, we got um, you know, we got North Farm taking on South Anderson Tech. Um, that'll be a really interesting matchup there. Um, Farmington Detroit Henry Ford, as we mentioned earlier. Um, curious to see how Farmington does without um Jordan Turner. Um, he is, um, looks like he's done for the year with a um, knee injury or ankle injury. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there. 
Um, District 25, this is over at, um, you know, Berkeley, of course. Um, Berkeley knocked off Detroit Mumpers, 78-47. to um, Big one for Berkeley with UD Jesuit coming up. Uh, that's a very difficult matchup right there for the Bears. Um, and then Royal Oak, of course, fell um, to Detroit Mumford. Um, I think that was 56-49. It was a really good game there. Um, the Phoenix take on Oak Park in their next game, of course. The Knights, of course, we know what Oak Park wants to do. They want to get back at UD Jesuit, of course, for two straight postseason losses. Um, so bottom line is, you know, when you look at the boys' districts, of course, you know, a lot of games starting up. Um, coming up, of course, we talked about Harper Woods and Gross Point North. That's going to be really interesting over there. Um, Ferndale University knocking off um, Hazel Park, I think 76 to 62. Um, that winner is going to take on Ferndale. Tough match for Ferndale University, taking on um, taking on a really good Ferndale team in Division Two. So when you look at the postseason, we're well underway. First round games already in the books, um, and we're going to see what happens from here. So. All right, everybody, we're signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Sangre Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, keep an eye on the football gigs as well. So you haven't heard anything yet. So we'll see what happens going forward um, as we head into the um, end of winter and the beginning of spring. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. I will see you next week. God bless. You.